Hello and welcome to Panther News 22. This is Toby Archibald. On this week's episode, we'll take an inside look at the BHS cheerleading team season. Then we take a look at Sydney Anderson detailing a BHS DECA students project for pediatric cancer. And we speak with BHS music department head, Miss Palanin Kudlik, about how COVID is affecting the music department. the new guidelines of coronavirus, a handful of fall sports have been postponed until spring. Today I'm going to be talking to senior Rachel Watt and junior Kennedy Steiner about their thoughts on a pushback season. How do you feel about your cheer season being pushed back until February? It's just like not the same. Fall games are always different, especially night games. It's kind of frustrating. It just won't be the same. It's just going to be a little bit cold. But, like, hopefully we just have a season, and that'd be great. Do you think we could have had a safe season during the fall? We probably could have, but, like, football couldn't have. So it really wouldn't have made sense. If we are able to cheer, do you think we'll have competitions or just be able to cheer at football games? Probably just games, maybe one competition, if anything. It depends on if the rules stay the same or if they change, because right now I don't even think we can stun. Do you think you'll ever be safe enough for us to cheer this year? I want to say yes, <laughs> but I really don't know. I hope, though. Our next story, Sydney Anderson takes a closer look into Cameron Jones and Kiara Rodell of the Deco Project on Friday Promise. September is known as the Childhood Awareness Month, other known as Pediatric Cancer. First September, we organized a set group of events to help raise our total budget of $20,000. We were able to accomplish this through our local events at Pomodorius, as well as Dairy Queen, and many other businesses. We are very motivated to help get money back to local families that need it, and to make a large donation to the Jimmy Fun Walk. This year, because of COVID restrictions, we held the Jimmy Fun Walk virtually at Lynch Park, depending on a route along the local coastline. The federal budget for cancer research is $6.14 billion. Only 4% of that budget is allocated towards pediatric cancer research. Yet every day, 43 children will be told that they're diagnosed with cancer. And unfortunately, of that group, three of them will pass away. Riley Robson Wine Foundation started four years ago when my little sister passed away from cancer. Riley Bridget Fessenden was born here in Beverly. She was a cheerleader, a softball player, and an Irish step dancer. She was the daughter of Mike Mercier and I are doing a DECA project working with the Riley Rocks Memorial Foundation. We are very grateful for all the money that we raised this September, but we want to continue our journey in raising money. Our goal is to raise $50,000 by the new year. 
And by doing that, we have some fundraisers planned. We have pajamas for pediatric cancer, and we are doing roundups at local businesses. So make sure to stay tuned and participate in our upcoming events. Supporting us helps give these children a fighting chance to grow up and be everything that they dream to be. For those still battling and for those we've lost, the Beverly High School Music Department, a place usually filled with playing, singing, and of course, music. Today, the halls are empty as students and faculty learn to live with the new challenges COVID-19 added to the equation. We had the opportunity to speak with Ms. Palanen Kudlik, the head of the BHS Choral and Music Department. Here's what she had to say about how classes are running under the new COVID guidelines. So here at school, we're not allowed to sing because DESE doesn't allow us. Uh, if you don't know what DESE is, it's the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. They're the ones who make all the rules about what you can and cannot do in school. They have said that singing is like the most dangerous thing that you could possibly do. So our administration has allowed us to keep our classes virtual so that you guys can sing at home. I'm trying to teach online, I have to create all of these extra practice files, click tracks, things that can allow you to hear the part that you're supposed to be singing. And that is like countless hours of work. If I had the opportunity to just teach regular, that would be where I'd like to go. And I, I miss the community. Online classes have become the norm for the music department. This year, running chorus, vocal ensemble, band, and treble choir, all virtually. So how have classes been going so far this year? <laughs> it's so hard to say. I feel exhausted all the time because I feel like I never have enough time to be with you. And I think everybody is doing the best that they can with the situation that we have. Um, I think their classes are going about as well as they could go. I think it's, it's difficult for everybody just trying to keep track of what time are you supposed to sign in for meetings, you know, and all of that. I guess we're doing, you know, the best we can right now. When we asked Ms. PK about the seemingly grim reality the music department might be facing due to these new COVID restrictions, here's what she had to say. So chorus has taken the biggest hit. Um, we only have 44 members in chorus. Over the course of the summer, we lost half of the population. And I think a lot of people just said, you know, it's not for me, singing online is really hard and it's not what I want chorus to be. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm really worried. You know, the kids who are the diehards are always gonna be there. I'm worried about the kid who's never sung before and doesn't get to feel the communityness because that's often what brings people back to us. Not necessarily that they think they're the best singers in the world, they just really like the atmosphere that we create. And every year, you know, we've lost a little bit. And then this year was that really big hit. And I thought, you know, we were on the uprise. So I, I am very worried about where it goes um, and how we recruit, you know, going forward. Although things may be feeling empty in the music department today, we always have a way to find the positives. You know, in some ways I feel, you know, that the connection is more important than the music sometimes. And Sometimes, depending on the window of time that you're in, it, it gives the opportunity, you know, to have that. That connection was shown in last year's Vocal Ensemble's production of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. There, there isn't, I'm getting welled up thinking about it, there isn't anybody who has seen that video of the Vocal Ensemble because we put it out so early on. It was like second week of shutdown. We had produced this beautiful piece of music and it was moving people all over the city. People were just blown away by it. And it was the, uh, you know, I get emotional sometimes. It was the rallying of the troops to not let music die last year. That was such a moving experience for me. And the fact that we were able to put on that whole spring concert with so many musical numbers and that kids just kept coming. And that's all I need for everybody to do. If you just keep coming, I will make it a positive experience, you know, the best way that we can. And, and we are touching a lot of people's lives if they let us, you know. That's all for this week. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week on Panther News 22.